Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be doing a very in-depth, like, I mean, clearly you can see the timestamp. This is gonna be a long one all about how to do eyeshadow for hooded eyes. This tutorial is appropriate whether your eyes are hooded or not. However, I did go into a lot more detail as to the tips and tricks so that if your eyes are hooded, you can still see your eyeshadow when your eyes are wide open. That was like the biggest thing for me is I used to do my eyeshadow and when I looked at you straight on, you couldn't even see it. I mean, not so much on camera, but I'm talking years ago. It's definitely a skill that has evolved over time and I have gotten a lot more tips and tricks down and they are all going to be spelt out very clearly in today's video. So if that's something you're into, make sure to keep on watching and please don't forget to subscribe because I do upload three times a week and that is the best way to stay up to date on all the fun stuff I'm posting. So whether or not you have hooded eyes, this tutorial is still going to be very helpful because it's just going to be a really pretty look and it's going to help you cheating your eyes to make them look a little bit bigger. If they're downturned, it's going to help to make them look a little more uplifted and all in all, it's just going to help to redefine your eyes eye shape. So let's jump into it. So obviously we're going to start by priming the eyes. I do like to take my MAC Painterly paint pot and the reason I use this especially for hooded eyes is before I prime you see how my eyes are all inside this little fold that all of this skin kind of gets overhung by that. This is the only thing I have found to consistently, 100% of the time, keep that area from creasing. In addition to my lids being very hooded, they are also quite oily. So I need to make sure that I have something basically industrial <laughs> to make sure that there is no creasing. And now I'm just doing this, I'm not dragging or pulling, I'm just taking these tiny little padding motions. This is a Morphe M. 173. It is an under eye concealer brush. I just swirl this quickly in the paint pot and then press. And then what I'm going to do, and this is the trick if your eyes are hooded. So I'm going to take a little bit of translucent powder. This is the Cody Airspun. And I'm going to, while the eye is closed and like really quite tight with no folds, I'm going to set down that paint pot with translucent powder. Now, right now, there is a huge trend going on in the industry. I mean, it's not now, it's been for a while now, of not setting down your eye primer because it'll give you more pigment. While that is the case, the issue you're gonna run into is that even though you're gonna have more pigment, the eyelid is still gonna fold. So what I'm doing is I am keeping the lid closed until this primer is dry and then I'm going to very slowly open the eye and you'll notice how much more lid space I have because that paint pot being set down is actually think of it like um, a piece of paper if you crumple the piece of paper every fold is going to show but if that paper is held very tight there is no issue because it's just going to be smooth my lid I basically just powdered it and set it down so think of my lid as a piece of paper and this one little fold right here is hopefully the only one that's going to be noticeable i'm going to do that on this eye and i'll be right back so for the actual shadow application i'm going to be jumping into the makeup revolution and jack collaboration palette now you can use any tones you want but the technique is going to be the same i'm going to start with a fluffy brush this is the makeup shack t11 you guys have also seen this is a Violet Voss shadow brush, same basic shape, Morphe R37. It's just a very fluffy dome topped brush. And I'm gonna start by going into my transition shade and I'm gonna be taking, it's gonna be right up here, the long neutral brown. And I'm not taking it on the tip of the brush, I'm kind of pressing it in on an angle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lean my head back a little bit. I'm gonna grab a mirror so I can see, I'm gonna zoom you in. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna lean back a little bit, and you see that fold of the crease? I'm going to put the brush right in that area, and I'm just going to, windshield wiper motions, deposit that first color. Now the reason I do this first, a lot of people do a transition color because it helps the blend, which is 100% true, when you see how soft and diffused that color is, when I build all the darker colors underneath it, they are all going to build in a very similar way. However, the reason I do it this way is I'm mapping out my eyes. 
So once I'm done buffing this shadow on and we really get to see that transition shade, I look directly forward and see if I can see the color. Notice how on this eye we can't see that color, but on this eye we can. That's because of where I put the shadow. So on the eye where you can't see it, I'm just going to blend a little bit higher. Now this is a trick you can use whether your eyes are hooded or not. Just to make the eye look bigger, you just take your transition a little bit higher because this blended definition just makes the eyes look wider. So for me, now you see how you can kind of see that better on both sides. So that's giving us the initial transition of where this color is going. So now that we have that down, we're going to blend out our crease shade. So I'm going to take this shade up here, which is like a soft pink, and I'm going to take that, instead of doing it on the side of the brush, I'm going to take it on the tip of the brush. And because of where we did it on the side of the brush before, it deposited most of that color in this region. I'm going to take the tip of the brush, and I'm actually going to go above that region. And this pink is just going to warm up that transition a little bit more and soften it a bit. So you see how this now is a little more blown out and a little bit more dramatic. The issue when you have hooded eyes is that your eyelids are a little more creasy and the worst part is you tend to have less lid space. So by taking this color up and blending it up higher towards the brow, it gives the illusion that you have more room for eyeshadow than you do. Now that we have that, we've made the eyes seem higher and bigger. So when I do the underside, you'll see that we're going to basically do the same thing. But I treat this entire area as lid. So that when I'm blinking or the crease, normally if your eyes are a little bit smaller, I'm going to grab a smaller brush just so I can show you. This down here is the mobile lid. But on me, because of where that crease is, I want to take that higher and I'm actually gonna go all the way up to the socket of my eye. So that way when I blink, all of that is noticed. But when my eyes are open, you can still see whatever color I do choose to take on the lid. Next on a flatter brush, this is the Morphe R39. I'm going to go into a darker, warmer tone. So I'm gonna take this chocolate brown right here. And for this, I'm gonna go on the side of the brush as well. And I'm going to take a decent amount of product. And what I'm going to do, is my mirror, I'm going to, you see the socket of the eye right here? I'm going to press this color up to that socket. And then once the color is down, I'm going to gently go back and forth to soften that line. So you see how it's barely noticeable? That's because we haven't blended it up yet but you see how the color is down where we want it. Once the color is where we want it, I'm gonna go into the first brush and I'm going to blend it into the crease and soften that. And by taking that higher, you're gonna see that we are actually defining the outer portion of the eye. So when I blink, this is gonna look higher, which is again gonna make the eyes look a little bit more rounded. Now this is not gonna be completely noticeable with the eyes open, unless you really take it up. So I don't take it all the way up in the entire region. I only like to build it up in this area right here at the high part of the brow, because what that's gonna do is that's going to trick the eye to look a little more upturned, because my eyes do tend to droop a little bit more. And then once that color is on, going back into the first shade, we're just going to blend out the edges and make sure everything is smooth. And now if you were going to do a halo eye, the only difference is you would also take that color on the inner corner. You can really, I mean, I hear so many people say that if you have hooded eyes, you cannot do a halo eye and that is completely untrue. It just means that you just have to do the same thing on the inner portion of the eye. So the next thing we're going to do, because again, we have that hooded eye, when we take our color on the crease, it is going to dwarf the inner corner. So with no additional product on this brush, I'm just going to make sure that when I blend the crease, I also blend that color into the socket, almost leading into my nose contour. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow the inner corner to look a little bit bigger, 
so that when we go in with our lid shade, the eyes are gonna look just a little bit more dramatic. So because the shades do tend to get muddy up top and this is looking a little wide, I totally just dug my nail into that shade. I then like to go into a really light, like, well, this is a white. And what I'll do is I will blend under the brow bone. And what this is gonna do is it's just going to soften those edges a little bit so that everything just looks a little bit softer. Now I know we're not done, but you see how that just made the eye look much larger and more dramatic? What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just throw on my lid shade. So I'm gonna grab a flat packer brush and I'm gonna load up on my metallic foil shade. Now I am gonna spray it with a little bit of Fix Plus. This is just going to help it be more metallic, which if you like a more subtle look, that's fine. But another thing I find that it does by having that setting spray in that pigment is it helps to keep it from creasing. So I like to start in the middle of the lid right here to kind of see where it's still visible while my eye is open. And then what I'll do is I will feather that color towards the inner corner and I will actually trace the crease. I don't want to take it up into the socket of the eye, but I just want to make sure that the color is visible on the entire lid. And you see how when the eye is open, you can still see that lid color, even though I have this hood kind of drooping over it. And then as if we did like a cream foundation and we didn't want it to crease or crack, I'm going to take a little bit of that same eyeshadow dry, and I'm just going to almost set down that setting spray just to lock this color in. Again, because my eyes are hooded and a whole lot more oily, that is what it's gonna take to make sure that this does increase or crack throughout the day. Then dipping back into that first brush, I'm just going to buff out the crease a little bit to make sure that none of that shimmer is sitting in the crease, accentuating lines or texture. And I know this is gonna look a little odd until there's mascara and lashes on, but this is the general shape. Now again, you can do this same technique whether or not your lashes or your lids are hooded and just get that same larger effect. What I'm gonna do now, and this is not so much for hooded lids and more for downturned eyes, I'm gonna take that first brush with a tiny bit of that dark brown just on the tip, and I'm actually just going to look down. And by doing this, I can see where that shape is and just connect my lower lash line to where the lid extends. Now I only take that about this far into the eye, like a third of the way, because if I go all the way, it's gonna be way too blown out, way too smoky, and it's gonna make my eyes look smaller, and that kind of defeats the purpose with what we're going for today. Instead, I'm going to grab that color switch, I'm going to clean off this brush, or if you have multiples, you can do that too. I do have a few just like it, but for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna clean this one off. And then I'm just going to soften that color and blend it towards the inner corner. Then I'm gonna take that first transition brown shade up here, and I'm gonna take that on a small little pencil brush. And I'm going to connect the inner portion of the lid to the outer. Now when I am doing this like smoky type eye, I don't like to take that shade all the way to the inner corner because I find that that defeats the purpose with all of the blending I did on the uh, upper lid area to then, you know, ruin that down here. Instead, I just take a soft liner, which today I'm gonna grab a brown liner and I'm gonna concentrate that on the outer portion of the eye and then lightly take it towards the inside. I definitely concentrated more on the outer portion and I took it a little bit lower. That's just gonna to help to exaggerate the almond shape of the eye a little bit. And then taking that same pencil brush, I'm just going to lightly blend that shadow just on the outer portion of the eye. Then taking that first brush with no additional product, I'm just going to kind of blend around everything 
to make sure everything is nice and smooth. And then the last thing, just to make sure that the eyes really pop, especially because you see how the hood is kind of covering a lot of this area, I'm gonna take that dark brown shade one last time, and I'm gonna take a small amount of that and just press it into this outer area so that when the eye, it, see how that just added a little bit more smokiness here? That's what we wanna do. We wanna make sure that when the eyes are closed and you get all of this blending, you get that same effect when the eyes are open. So eyeliner for hooded eyes is an entirely different video and I will do that at a later date. First off, because I don't personally love eyeliner on myself. Secondly, it's less about the eyeliner on my hoods and more about the fact that my eyes are downturned. So I either need a tiny little kitten wing or I need to go full on Amy Winehouse and nothing in between. Otherwise, you can't see my wing. It's part about of the shape of my eyes as well as the hood. So the last thing I'm gonna do before the eyeshadow portion is complete is I'm gonna grab my highlighter that I used today and I'm going to take that on the inner corner. So I just took a dense brush to place it down and then taking a fluffier one, I'm just going to lightly pat out the outer portion of that just to soften it. That way you have that pinpoint blinding highlight like right on the inner corner itself. And then for the rest of that eye area, it's a little bit softer because I want that whole inner corner to be brightened, but I really want that pinpoint of brightness just in the tear duct. All right, I'm going to go quickly throw on a lash and I'll be right back. So 90% of the time I'm like, I'm gonna go put on mascara and I end up wearing a lash. Today is actually the opposite. I put on my mascara and I'm like, honestly, I'm good with how this looks today, so I'm going to skip the lash. But you still do get the exact effect as to how a hooded eye can still have a dynamic, blended, multicolored eyeshadow. And any of my tutorials are gonna be eyeshadow for hooded eyes friendly. Today was just a little bit more in depth on making sure that the hoods are not neglected. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave some of your tips and tricks down below. I have been loving that lately I've seen more of you commenting to each other, answering each other's questions before I get a chance to respond to the comments. So I will still be responding. However, I think it's really cool that you guys are helping each other out. Anyway, make sure to leave those comments down below about any other tips or tricks or questions you might have, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!